great annual sweepstakes of American agriculture. The 15th National Corn Husking Contest was held November 3rd on the 470-acre farm of J.N. Jensen, Del Rapids, South Dakota. The sky was heavily overcast, and a cold, penetrating wind greeted the crowd of husking fans. It was a remarkable scene as 125,000 visitors born to the contest in cars bearing license plates from three-fourths of the states in the Union streamed through the tremendous exhibit ground. Husking kings have been glorified at 14 previous national contests, but this one also gave recognition to a queen. The day before the contest, 21 corn huskers selected the queen from among the following contestants. The Mrs. Hedlund, Larson, Rickensrud, Wilbur, Sorensen, Longsden, Raybell, Drake, Bruett, Salisbury, Johnson, Schmidt, Peterson, Bosch, and at the end of the line, the Queen, Venita Apley. About 10 a.m., the parade began forming. Seven bands were scattered between the 21 Huskers' wagons. Each wagon carried the state pennant and was accompanied by 40 guards. The two-mile colorful parade was led by Roger C. Mills, General Chairman, and Mayor Phillips of Del Rapids. The Queen, Vanita Apley, and her escort were riding in the first wagon, which is accompanied by the guards and gleaners, right behind the South Dakota State College student band. Descendants of the valiant Ogallala Sioux tribe drove in cars 400 miles to the contest. Will any of these sun-bronzed athletes beat the world's record of Elmer Carlson, who husked 41 and 25 one-hundredth bushels net in 1935? Well, the parade is coming to an end now, and that contest is about to begin, and here's Ray Hansen, runner-up in this year's Minnesota contest, setting a terrific pace at the start. This is Hansen's seventh time in national competition, each time as runner-up. Ray might easily have been taken for a presidential candidate, as there were thousands of fans crowding around and hampering him. Hanson, last year's champion, finished 11th with 18 and 82 one hundredth bushels. Robert Hart, Ohio champion, won the state contest with 24 and 87 one hundredth bushels, which was also the heaviest gross load. The conditions at the National were the reverse of the dry weather at his state contest. Footing also was decidedly slippery, and the damp ears required plenty of tugging. Bob turned in 16 and 18 one hundredth bushels for 20th place. <laughs> Louis Carty, the blonde rangy husker from Stanton County, won the Nebraska state title by husking 30 and 34 one hundredth bushels, breaking last year's record by almost three bushels. Weaving, crouching to reach low corn and fallen ears, and often slipping in the muck, is slowing the rattle of his ears against the red dotted bang board. Though he brought in 19 and 16 one hundredth bushels for eighth place. Henry Peterson, the 40 year old Iowa champion, won the state contest by snapping 29 and 18 one hundredth bushels, which was 111 pounds more than turned in by 28 year old Harold Larson. This is the third time in a row age and experience turned back youth in the race for the Iowa championship. Peterson won 12th place in the national with 18 and 70 one hundred bushels, while Larson's revenge was sweet. He came in third with 21 and 65 one hundred bushels. <laughs> Irvin Bauman, 24-year-old runner-up in the 1935 national contest, won this year's Illinois State Nubbin Derby by hitting the bang board at 60 years a minute clip for a total of 32 and 75 one hundred bushels. The Illinois Husker brought in more than any other contestant in a gross load of 1,750 pounds with a net of 21 and 74 one hundredth bushels to make him second. <laughs> Stanley Yeager, Pennsylvania's first state husking champion and first representative at a national contest. Stanley, the York County entry, won the state contest by pitching a net load of 25 and 16 one hundredth bushels. At the national contest, the ears were harder to rip cleanly from the stalks, although the shucks came off smoothly and easily. This cut his load to 14 and 85 one hundredth bushels. <laughs> Cecil Vining successfully defended his title as Kansas' best corn husker at the big state contest by shucking 22 and 47 one hundredth bushels. 
He snapped 19 and 14 one hundredth bushels for ninth place in the national. Richard Anderson, the filling station operator, was six times South Dakota state champion and won the state contest this year by snapping 25 and 39 one hundredth bushels. During practice on Monday, he put the pressure on several times and rattled ears against the bang board at 60 a minute. Experts said Anderson had an excellent chance to win, but he came in 13th with 18 and 64 one hundredth bushels. Villas Jacks won the Indiana State Husking Contest by pulling 50 years a minute or a total of 24 and 41 one hundredth bushels. After Villas's load of corn was weighed and the deductions made, he netted 20 and 79 one hundredth bushels, winning sixth place. Dick Post husked his way to Wisconsin State Championship by jerking and stripping cleanly 26 and 70 one hundredth bushels. Post grips the ear with his left hand, slash bangs with the hook on his right, and peels the husk from the ear. Dick came in fourth in the national with 21 and 33 one hundredth bushels. John Harris defeated four of his sons in the county contest and won the Missouri championship with 19 and 87 one hundredth bushels. He came in 19th today with 16 and 21 one hundredth bushels. Ted Balco, six times Minnesota champion Husker, won the state contest this year with 20 and 98 one hundredth bushels. Falco, now 33 years old, has proved that he can husk fast and clean in any kind of corn, in any locality, and in all kinds of weather. Ted likewise won the national championship in 1934 by turning in 25 and 78 one hundredth bushels. Falco's movements are one long flowing harmony. There's not a waste motion nor a waste step. His eyes are always two or three ears ahead of his hands. No wonder he has a big load of corn. Furious activity in the field stopped with a jolt at 1.05 p.m. when the closing dynamite blast echoed throughout the ground. While the officials are computing the net weight of the loads, the crowd anxiously wait the scoreboard. Twelve Pine Ridge Sioux Indians, among them were Chief Returns from Scout, Chief Lone Elk, and Frank White Buffalo, a grandson of the famous Sitting Bull, entertained the crowds with tribal dances. The Indians danced the white horse, the fox dance, the chief's dance and other ceremonial steps. The younger men of the tribe sang the sun dance and danced the two-step called the rabbit dance. For rhythmic music, they use only a drum, a section of hollow tree over which calfskin has been stretched. The audience was invited to the platform to try the dance and they seemed to be enjoying it. the 1938 national champion, Ted Balco. The new monarch of the nation's most grueling sport received a silver trophy and a hundred dollar prize check from Barry Akers, editor of The Farmer, while Queen Vanita Apley looks on. Ted won by shucking 22 and 24 one hundredth bushels in 80 minutes. Ted said, I picked them clean and just as fast as I could. I guess that's the reason I won. The ears were pretty small, but the wet corn didn't bother me much. It seemed pretty much the same as picking back home. Yeah.